Hey everybody, this is Rachel again, and I just wanted to finish up what I was saying in class. I'm so sorry for having gone through uh, and losing track of the time. So I'm going to share my screen and just finish up a couple things with you. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Okay, so the first thing is we talked about uh, just making a guide for ELC. I don't know how I missed that, but anyway, I have now created a guide for ELC students. It is linked from the education guide as well, um, but you'll want to go to uncg.libguides.com slash ELC instead of the other URL that I'd put on here, and I have updated the slides as you can see. Um, and this will take you to the library guide for ELC in general. I also made a specific guide for ELC 720, so you could go directly to that. You could click on it. Um, you could use this link to get to it as well. Okay, so there were a couple things that I wanted to finish talking to you about. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Okay, again, we have access to hundreds of databases through the library, so you don't need to limit yourself to any in particular. Again, please feel free to use the databases that you find interesting. Um, I want to show you how to specifically find theses and dissertations because this is something that can be helpful for graduate students, <coughs> um, specifically when you get toward the time when you're going to need to uh, write your dissertation. So I have links here and I'll make sure that these links are on your library guide as well. I will put them on this home page. Um, there are lots of different ways to view dissertations and theses from different schools. Um, we have two different databases that can do this for you. One of them specifically deals with dissertations and theses at UNCG, so I wanted to be sure to demo that one for you. Um, in this database, you are able to search by keywords, by author, um, committee members, which I think is a really neat feature. You can search by advisor, institution, things like that. This one is UNCG specific. Um, earlier I did a search. Uh, I think this is really helpful because if you're trying to choose someone that you might want to ask to be your advisor um, or if you have any sort of input into who your committee members might be, it could be helpful to do a search in this database to see what they've done before, the type of work that they supervised before. So. I looked up um, Dr. Peck from ELC earlier, and this is one thing that I wanted to be sure to note. So I, first of all, how did I do that? I went to look up advisors toward the bottom and I searched Peck. Okay. Um, note that there is a listing for Craig Peck and a listing for Craig M. Peck. I am assuming it's the same person um, since this database is specific to UNCG. So I'm going to click on both of those boxes and I'm going to click add to search. <laughs> And so that tells the system uh, that I want to see that specific uh, person listed in the advisor. Um, so let's say you were considering asking Dr. Peck to uh, supervise your research. I don't know if Dr. Peck is accepting students. This is just an example. Um, you can see that Dr. Peck has supervised uh, 41 dissertations that are listed here, or dissertations or theses. Um, and you could do things like sort by date. So if I wanted to see the most recent ones. I could enter a specific date range last five years maybe. Um, I could also limit by subject. There aren't that many results here so I think you know 31 it's pretty manageable to flip through. So let me just show you an example. I was looking at this one earlier. Okay so you can see the author of this. You can see when it was written. Okay um, you can view the actual text of the dissertation here. Uh, you can download a PDF if that was helpful for you. Um, abstract and details. It's got a nice abstract here. Um, again, those subject headings that I showed you earlier, these can be really invaluable if you're interested in this topic but don't necessarily know what terms you want to search for. So just wanted to be sure to point that database out to you. Um, there's also one called Dissertations and Theses Global, which is going to search much more widely. I can't remember how many institutions it may say down here. It does thousands of universities is all it says. So you could do a basic search here um, or you could do a more advanced search. That's the view that we've been looking at. So if I tried virtual learning and secondary, again, very basic search, probably not nearly detailed enough. I'm just kind of playing around with this. OK, so I told it to find me things that include the phrase virtual learning and secondary um, in this dissertations and theses database. So you could narrow your results from there. You can play with the filters on the left. We talked about that stuff. <laughs> um, I just wanted to point this out to you. Uh, one thing that I will say about dissertations and theses, um, as 
sources is that you'll want to check with your advisor, you'll want to check with your professors before you use dissertations and theses in any sort of paper or project because some folks um, are fine with you using them, some folks would prefer that you not use dissertations and theses. The reasoning varies, every situation is different, so basically if you're not sure, go ahead and ask. They can uh, yield some really interesting information, um, so I think they're looking worth looking at, particularly um, their references lists. Let's see, we talked a little bit about reference lists and the importance of paying attention to those right here. So I would suggest that you uh, take a look at those. Even if you're not necessarily going to uh, use the actual dissertation, take a look at what they're citing. All right, um, Sage Research Methods. This is a really cool database that I just want to quickly show you. Um, you can find it. Uh, it'll be on the homepage of the ELC guide. Uh, it is already on your ELC 720 guide under finding articles. I've got a little introduction video from Sage down there if you're interested. But going into the actual database, I think it's really cool because you can do lots of different things. Now, Sage Research Methods is, um, well, let's just show you instead of talking at you about it. So I'm going to go to browse by. You can browse by discipline. Now, ELC is obviously very interdisciplinary, so I'm not telling you that you have to do this, but education could be a good place to start here. And what it's going to do is list common research methods um, or common things that they have that are of interest to people doing research in education. Um, and so it's going to give you some information about that. It gives you a nice reference here to just like a nice introduction. Um, what I like about it is that they have all kinds of content in here. They have books, case studies, data, they have videos, journal articles, all kinds of really neat things. Um, you could search for a specific method by name if you wanted to in this database. If you didn't really know what method you might be interested in using, or you didn't have a name of a specific method in, in mind, um, then this searching by discipline page could be really helpful. And you could narrow it down over here. I could say, Let's say I want to use cases, uh, postgraduate, and apply that filter. It's going to cut my results down quite a bit. It's a little sluggish today. Anyway, you can see the results there. Um, let's just click on the title. Again, these are case studies. I specifically told it I wanted to look at that. You can see when it was published. Um, you have, they do some really cool breakdowns. I like that a lot of their sources are going to be linked. They provide nice context. It's just a really useful thing if you are looking to learn more about a particular method of research or see how a particular research method might be applied. Um, so if I go back to the main page here, <clears throat> another thing I wanted to be sure to show you, you can find this under books and reference. They have something called the Little Green Book series and the Little Blue Book series. Now, the Green Book series are going to um, talk specifically about types of quantitative research methods. The Blue Books are going to talk about qualitative research methods. So I'm going to click on Little Blue Books. You're welcome to use any of them. I'm just choosing this one. And you can see it's, it's basically a short introduction to um, whatever the particular method is. So if I was interested in participatory action research, this little blue book on that would provide me with a nice overview. And you can see it's broken out by chapter. They always have nice references. Um, so you could click on it and it would take you to the specific chapter. Again, being a little sluggish today, here you go. If you don't wanna read this as like a website, you could download a PDF, that's over here. Um, again, the site tool is available to you. Be really, really careful with this um, because as we talked about in class, these can often get it wrong. Okay, but Sage Research Methods is really great. I have just barely scratched the surface of what this database can do. I would really encourage you to dig in um, more and feel free to ask me questions about it if you want to know more. We're doing a webinar on it later in the semester. I will get the date for you and I'll make sure to send it to your professors. I might even be able to link to the um, sign up from your library page. We'll make sure you have that because it is a nice resource. A couple more things, I promise. Citation help, again, we're using APA. Um, 
we have a library guide on citation and that is linked from your ELC 720 guide. I actually really highly recommend something outside the library, which is APA style blog. It's just APA style .apa .org. Um, And this is great because they give you really simple to understand um, examples and, and explanations of different things. So I use this all the time. I can never remember for instance, how title pages are supposed to be set up. So you go under style and grammar. I click paper format in this case, and I could click title page setup, and it will give me uh, examples, show me specifically how it's meant to be done. Um, also, I really like under references, they can give you very specific examples of source types. So uh, let's say I mentioned earlier citing a podcast. So if I scroll down to audio visual, podcast references is here and it will actually show me um, how to do it uh, both um, it will show you how to do it in your references list it will also show you your parenthetical versus your narrative citations um, I can link to some resources on the difference between parenthetical and narrative citations basically it has to do with um, how you're actually talking about sources within the text of your paper that you're writing um, APA, we could get way into the weeds on APA, um, and I'm happy to talk with you more about it, but APA style blog, free to use, put together by the folks at the American Psychological Association, um, so they are the authority on this, and I really like what they've done here. Okay, Zotero we've talked about very quickly zbib.org. So Zotero is fantastic if you are writing a dissertation, if you're writing kind of a longer paper, um, doing uh, work that's going to require more citations. If you just need a quick like one off citation, you just need one or two uh, for something that you're doing, Zbib can be a really excellent place to go. Now these are automatically generated citations, which I've already warned you about a couple times. So don't trust this without checking it against something more authoritative like um, APA style blog. So let's say I found an article that I wanted to cite. I take the link here, pop it into Zbib, and click Cite. Um, it's going to want to give me MLA by default. You actually have to go down here and change it to APA 7. And it's telling me right here, uh, hey, APA has weird rules about capitalization, so you're going to want to check this to make sure that it's right. They are acknowledging it's an issue, so you have to say OK. Um, and here you have the citation. So you could copy this, put it into your references list, and then check it against something more official. Um, it's not plagiarism, in my opinion, to copy and paste a citation. You just want to make sure that you have made sure that it is accurate and, and has all the, the right information in the right places. This also works with things like ISBNs, DOIs. You could put those things in, and it can also cite them for you. Again, this is good for, I would say, 10 or fewer citations. If you're getting into more than that, you probably want to go with Zotero, the, the actual software. Last thing, I highly recommend these tutorials for you. Um, and you can access them by going to this website, go.uncg.edu slash ultra. It's mad because I copied and pasted it. OK. Um, I highly recommend these for you. You can check out any of them that you want. Um, but for instance, if you wanted to do the one on literature reviews, because we didn't talk about literature reviews tonight, but there's a lot of information that we could share about that. Um, you scroll down, or you could do Control F, whatever you want to do, literature reviews. And it's going to say, OK, this is going to take you 15 minutes to complete. You got some quick learning objectives. You have these quick check questions throughout to make sure you're understanding correctly. Um, and at the end, you can take the final assessment if you want to. If it's not required for a class, you certainly don't have to. I just think that these are, um, I'm just clicking to get through it quickly. Um, I think that these are really helpful for background on uh, particular subjects. The literature review one in particular is really excellent and I encourage you to use it. Um, I also suggest there's a Google Scholar in citation chaining, APA, plagiarism, Evaluating sources is another thing that we didn't get into tonight. It's really, really important for you to be able to evaluate quality sources um, from less high quality sources. And one of my favorite strategies for this is lateral reading. I will put a video on lateral reading on your course's LibGuide that really explains it. Um, it is extremely easy and extremely helpful. So I strongly recommend those. 
Here's the link to the slides. Again, it's all going to be linked from your library guide for 720. I'll make sure that that is all on there. Um, and if you have any questions, again, please feel free to get in touch with me. Um, definitely feel free to reach out. I'd be more than happy to help you. Have a great night.